So good morning to you again, and welcome to the second semester, <laughs> week two of our 10 week session together this semester. This is 2021-2022 academic year, and the course you are in is UGRC 150, Critical Thinking and Practical Reasoning. I'm currently engaging group 10 members directly, but also possibly other students who may have found this lecture time more convenient. Welcome. There are some few house rules I would want us to have after I've done an introduction of myself. My name is Dr. Nancy Miles Bafo Jimfi, your course instructor directly for this group and group 11, also city campus groups, but also the coordinator of the course UGRC 150 for now. I am going to clarify one or two things that I think will be useful to you and also to your colleagues so you can pass it on. Your surest bet focus for information in the course is the Sakai platform. So you want to make it a habit to always visit the announcement tool and get information. How to navigate Sakai, I suppose you would be well abreast with it now. If you don't know how to log onto Sakai and then explore it, there is a, a, a video there and some resources there that will help you navigate your way on Sakai. If you still have issues, then you contact our online assistants to help you. You have done week one. That is what we did in person, physical, the last time on Saturday in groups. Those groups were meant to set you off. You should meet the lecturers. You should have some interactive physical, you know, face-to-face -face kind of interaction we hope will be helpful to you, okay? So you've had that. And because it isn't everyone who may have made a time or who would even be allowed or would want to study on a Saturday and all those conditions, I sent a lecture slides on topic one to all groups. I'm able to do that because of the office I pay now. So every group, got at least some slides on what topic one, thoughts as object of scrutiny, and some introduction into critical thinking, practical reason, which will be very useful to you. Let me quickly inform those of you who may be worried that they see more than one uh, UGRC 150 at their course site. You see, when you go to your UGRC, Currently, you will see this. I'm sharing a screen. So if you can see, then please look. You see that I'm highlighting something. This is UGRC 151, S2 2122, okay? UGRC 151, this one, this is describing the main course site where all of you were. And then from this course site where we had close to 6,000 of you for main campus, we have uh, allowed you to create and join groups so that we can manage you. See, we can't have all of you here. How would we take questions from 6,000 students at once and all that, okay? So this is just the main course site. Everybody will be here. This is supposed to be unpublished after we had done our grouping. So you see that we are currently on this group. This is group 10. How do you know that? How do you know your group? After the UGRC 150, the number you see next is your group, okay? There is no group called group one. Okay, one here currently is just describing the, the campus. This is main campus, city campus is four. So if you see UGRC 151, S2, 21, 22, and then you also see UGRC 150, say 10, S2, 21, 20. Those are not two different groups. Those are one main course site and a group. That is not a, a confusion, don't be worried. The main course is supposed to be unpublished, but because students are still registering, some of you are still registering as of now. When they register, the main course site picks them. So it activates the already unpublished site. That's how come I unpublished this yesterday. I've unpublished it this morning, but apparently a few of you still see both. 
just focus on your group now as we you have been instructed to, and you will do fine. So this one goes to you because you is the first class I'm having uh, for the week. I think this is the first class for the week. So you are hearing it directly from me, but I'll post an announcement again because some, some feel that that means they are in two groups. This is not a group site, okay? So you can tell your colleagues when your official WhatsApp platforms are created, this is group 10. So if you're a student and you go and see both this and that, you focus on the group side. Someone will see 12, uh, 12, someone will see 11, 22. There are groups 10 all the way to 22. So you see, you just see 150, 10, 11, 12, 22. Focus on that group and let your this one ignore the UGRC 151. We call on the registration and when there is no longer the opportunity to register. Look, friends, friends, please. This is not your first semester. Okay. You will create a lot of feedbacks and disrupt your class. So don't unmute until you have something to say. All right. I'm just saying that by the time our semester is well in, into when we are well into the semester, this main course site will disappear from your, it will be unpublished and then the unpublished site will remain unpublished. All right. So those were some pedagogical issues that we can do. So when you go to your Sakai, this is mine. You see all the courses I have up here. You will just go into your group. So this is group 10. I have advised everyone to go to the announcement tool on every course that is mounted online on Sakai. When you get to the course site, visit the announcement tool first. It's important. You will know the announcement that have been posted for you there, okay? So these ones are there for you. Look at, I said group 10 link for tomorrow's 8.30 a.m. meeting online. I, I gave you the link directly so that you don't have to even go to the resource tool to find it. I'm sure other lectures will do the same for their specific groupings, okay? Now, if you go to the resource tool, also, you will see, Please mute yourself. Why have you unmuted? Who is this? <laughs> I will leave the class for you to keep doing that, please. All right, so you will go to resource to here. See the resources uploaded for you here. So many of them. Tell your friends. This came from the coordinator of the course, UGRC 150, yours truly myself, to every group. I'm going to do the same for City Campus, hopefully by close of day, because they are in, uh, their online class starts in the third week. So they still have this week to settle in. I'm saying that every human person registered into this course and on Sakai has this content. You can never have any excuse, you see that, to, to not do well. Every individual human person saw this. It is there. If you don't access it, you can't blame anybody, not the TA, not your specific lecturer, not the course handlers, not the, no, it will be your sole responsibility. Why? Because we have given you everything that pertains to life and God will <laughs> so tell your friends to go to their resource too, okay? And that's what I'm showing you. Very important that we can take up to the content. So I'm here. I said, look at this. At resource two, when you open it, this is what you see. UGRC 150, 2022 second sem teaching links for main campus. If you opened this document, you see all the links for all lecturers of this course. There are seven of us. And each lecturer is doing two different groups. I think with the exception of one of our colleagues who cannot do two for some other reasons, okay? So the two different times that the lecture will meet students online like I'm doing and engage them are all there. Thankfully, each lecture has only one link. So you won't have 14 links or 13 links. You just have seven links for main campus, even another seven for city campus also, okay? Now, if you feel that perhaps you are in my group, group 10, but you would want to rather attend another time because maybe this time is not favorable or you had a headache or something. We are actually asking for consistency though. We don't want you picking and choosing per week. You may not follow the sequence of lecturing because I may end somewhere. And then because I know where I ended, I'll continue from there when I meet my, my group again, okay? So you, you don't want to just be picking and choosing as and when. But if for some reason you are in group 10, but you want to attend group 22, lecture because of the time or perhaps other factors we want to give you that right to determine which group you want to be in you see 
So you are allowed to do that. Just don't be alternating left, right, center. So if so, then you pick the specific link and then you copy it into your browser, hit your enter. You are in that group. You just have to make sure you are there at the day the lecturer said he'll be there and at that time. That's very important. And then you can access the content. The course outline tells you what, what topic to expect for which week. And it is running through for all of us as a team. So Saturday for main campus, we did our whole topic one on object, uh, thought as object of what scrutiny, sentence shape thoughts. We introduced you to the course and we showed you interrogative, decorative, and stuff like that. Then you went to facts versus values, how to distinguish them, and why all sentences <coughs> are not statements, but all statements are sentences, explicit and implicit meanings. Okay, we did all of that. If you didn't, go to the content there and engage it. Uh, my video is off, but I'm sure by now you know the UGRC 150 textbook. Get it. It is going to help you align your learning to the delivered content. And then we have also put slides there. For you. So this is my lecture. If you, are, if you are looking on the screen, the lecture one slides that was sent to everyone, just so that you don't have any excuses, because at that time, uh, the group sites had not been mounted. So you have not engaged your lecture yet, and so on and so forth. Then there is also the tutorial links for main campus students. Those links will come with stipulated times per day, per tea, authenticated teaching assistants of the course, not people who mount so-called whatever and claim that they are teaching you. If you don't do well, don't blame us because we are doing everything and we are being as open and you know <laughs> we are giving so many varied options which are still official and within the, the, lo the locals we are working with, you see that. So these TAs are there. They are, their information is also on the course outline that we went through on Saturday. That course outline is as your course overview, the course site here, overview. If you go there, you'll see it here, this one. I put it at syllabus and it is also copied to you here. There is it, it at resource to course outline. Engage the course outline. Know what the expectations are of you if you have not done that or you need a review. The units, the assessment details, the percentages, where they will be placed, as et cetera, et cetera. And finally, just for you to know, there is also a dossier, a document that has, that's what I'm pointing at, at your resource too. This is there for every group. It's not any advantage given to any group over others. I sent it to all group sites, both main and city, as I speak with you, the dossier, okay? It has recorded, video lectures on units six, seven, nine, and 10. Just those four units. The other units are relatively accessible. You can rely solely on your direct lecturer's content. But these ones are examinable. Six and seven, for example, the two units will appear in your IA and also in your final exam. The IA is 30 marks, 30 out of 100, you see. The final exam is 50 marks, 50 out of 100. So those two alone, can give you a straight A in the course, 80%. We don't want students having all the excuses they want. If for some reason one lecture missed his or session, or there was a holiday, or the content wasn't received by you as you should, you will have all the excuses to claim that oh, so and so and so is the reason why so and so group or so and so person or so and so lecture or so and so T did so and so and so. You, know, you see that the excuses students can have. So we have put this down for you as your focal point, focus for those units, just in case your interactions didn't come out the way you wanted them to. You engage it, and if you have questions, you go to your lecture. This will be in tandem with what your specific lecture will put there for you as well. I am telling. My, this is group 10, and I'm pointing them out to you. I, so, I suppose my colleagues will also do the same for their specific groups. If that is clear and you have already seen the course outline, let me see if I can open that also quickly. This is the first lecture online, and I suspect that maybe some, quite a number of you may not have turned up for the first, uh, you know, first week in person, or they might have been there, but projector issues or 
they were late or something. So they didn't see everything. See the course outline up there. That is my detail. Okay. My office hours, that's Dr. Nancy Miles. Jim, if you put there, you can see it. The course syllabus. Mm, my detail. This is the email to communicate stuff to. For your own sake, if you put it in any other email of mine, you know, it might delay because I teach other courses, which are also in the thousands. So if I go to my UGRC email, see it's Nancy Miles, UGRC 150, then I'm, I'm sure that the query coming there is a UGRC 150 query. My frame is set well. I, I know that this student may be a College of Health Science student or a Mathematical Science student or something because of the course in question. This course is not department specific. If you put it in my UG email, which is also my email, I attend to them. Before we will even know whether it is a UGRC issue, but I may be thinking you are a philosophy student. That's what I teach, okay? Or a, a part time somewhere, a medical student or something, you know. So just listen to simple instructions. Don't say, oh, but it's also her email. If I put it there, why? It's sometimes you, you put something somewhere, I say, right into the email so we can follow and have records to help you. If it is a results issue or assessment, something, we can always trace the records to this email, not on WhatsApp. All right, so I think you get that now. These are my able TAs that will be out of the seven TAs we have these two fine lady and gentleman, uh, Ms. Benis J and Mr. Isaac Johnson will help you. These emails are there to help you on online related issues, okay, that are within their uh, purview. If there is beyond them, they'll send a notice and I'm glad to assist, okay? But, and these are all the details of all the lectures and all the teas. You see that? All right. You can look at them per group. Then the course description, we went through them in at least in our groups over the weekend. The course goal, the course objectives, learning outcomes, how we deliver the course, that information is here. Activities C. Take all assessments before the due date, friends. I don't want to have too many issues. And I don't want to cry with you when you come. And because of some 10% assignment that you didn't get, you are, you are scoring a grade you don't want. You won't be able to do anything about that. That is why we are telling you before. So do all assessments before the due date. That's assessment schedules are week three, week five, then week seven for the MISSEM on site using UGCS computers. And then the final exam, 50% per the university schedule. Okay, you can relay that to your friends who have not bothered to look at this. These are all they went through them. Okay. And then we want you to ensure that you have a strong and stable internet connection. Perhaps for our off-site uh, uh, assessment, you won't even bother much about it because it will be open for a week, the first assessment, which is 10%. There will be essays, so there will not be timed assessments, sir. So you maybe you may not want to bother much about the internet connect connectivity issue. For the mid -SEM, the ones that you will come to main campus to do for uh, the 30% and the final exam, you will use the university's computers. So if you are there and there is a technical issue, the, the ABLE supervisors there will attend to it so that we all have a fair system of assessment, okay? The required test book already touched on it. Most of you got it on Saturday. We still have some, uh, quite a number here at the philosophy uh, section. Philosophy departments around the post office, main campus, opposite uh, main, Main hall, uh, what is it? How do you say it? Legon Hall, main, eh? You can find us around the upstairs. Come to the department and purchase a copy for yourself to help you study. No, it shouldn't be even one CD more than 50 Ghana. The, the price given by the investors, 50 CDs. So we just pick it and put it here. Exactly that amount. If you can also go to the School of Arts Secretariat, it's all well and good. And then our topic one, engaged what is on your screen now. If you, you are not sure that we covered that, look at your screen. I don't know which physical lecture you were able to attend last Saturday, but you would have engaged this. So you had an introduction to critical thinking. The course outline was reviewed. Look, up, look on the screen, I'm pointing, okay? Then you learned how to distinguish the types of sentence shaped thoughts. Interrogative, imperative, declarative, sentence fragments, and emotive expression. See them, they are there. You know that it's only declaratives that have a truth value. 
They are also called statements, propositions, etc. These will come in your eye when you where you do the multiple choice and the short answer question time to give you your 30 marks. Okay, they will come. So, so remember. Okay, but for your assessments, which will come in the third week and the fifth week, there will be essay type questions couched from the discussions for those periods, all the way units one, two, three, and five. That's where they'll come. But for your IA, those units will come as what? Short answer questions and multiple choice questions. And so you shouldn't miss it. Hello. The IA will cover units one, two, three, five, six, and seven. No unit four. The textbook content unit unit four is not examinable. The same with unit eight. They are not examinable. All right. So you learned that. Then you learned identifying different types of what declarative sentences. Please, my video is My sister, don't worry. Okay. It will come. Is anybody seeing the, the screen, please? Anybody at all seeing it? Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes, madam. Yes. 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 Yo, thank you, my dear friend. So, my sister, who can see, don't worry at all. Please, everybody mute now. So, my sister, don't worry at all. It happens. It's just like the way sometimes you'll be making a call, the person is standing next to you, and, and the, folks, the folks tell you that hey, the person has switched off their phone. You know? So, don't worry, it will come. It's just the course outline on Sakai I am dealing with. Okay. When I stop sharing and share something else, I suppose you'll see. Check your network also. So the three types of declarative sentences, just as a refresher that we build on it, were what? Factual statement, value judgment, and definitions. We said factual statement, describe what is there, out there, by what? Observation. It's a description, like you decode. It is in the object, so you describe what is there. You break down what is there to find its truth or falsity. Okay. That's why we say factual statements are objective. It's based on the object, not the subject speak, not me, the one observing my viewpoint. No, it is the object. Okay, so it's objective. If I say it is raining now here at Lego, that is a factual matter. It can be factually true or factually false. As we speak, perhaps for, for me, where I am now on Lego on campus, it is factually false. But what makes it a factual statement is what? The fact that I depend on my five senses, I'm either hearing, seeing, touching, or tasting to ascertain truth. See, that's what makes it a factual statement. Whilst a, a value judgment is prescriptive, it, that one prescribes what should be, not what is. Check the language very well. We are doing critical thinking and practical reasoning. And what is in our mind, the thoughts that we have, is what is captured in the language. So a critical thinker is very concerned about language. That's why the first three or so units of the textbook will examine language and its use. Even unit six, deduction and induction, it's a matter of language, okay? You want to be careful what you are saying. I put that in the slides I gave you. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Why? As much as humanly possible, we will, we will falter here and there, but you have to have that kind of posture. Don't say, I'll kill you, you this girl. Miku, I'll kill you tomorrow. <laughs> if I catch you, I'll kill you. The next day, if we find a person dead, we can say, oh, I didn't mean it to us. We didn't mean it, hey. Why did you say it? Okay, so you want to be careful what you are saying. and will take you by your words. God help all of us as we, we talk, okay? Therefore, the language is what I'm trying to show you. Factual statements, which are also declaratives, you learned that. Do what? They describe what is there, what is there. Whilst value judgment prescribe what should be there, what should. That one is a prescription, script and scribe to write. So before you see, three means before. Okay, before you see, you already have a written verdict. Think of it that way. That's a prescription. Before you even make a judgment of the matter, you already hold a view. So if I say he's a good friend, that use of the word good is a value term that renders my declarative what? A value term. Why? 
It means before I even engage this, the person, I have my conception of what it means to be good. Good is not an objective matter. I, I give several examples in my groups. And I suppose my colleagues also did say, don't unmute yourself, please. Don't unmute yourself. I keep muting. So the persons keep unmuting. Their background is very noisy. Did you read the course out? I can, I can fish you out easily. And we'll suck you out of the course. <laughs> don't do that. I'm trying to deliver content to you. So when I say get yourself muted, please do. Once in a while, we may slip. Then I mute all. The next minute, the person on mute. What do you want to tell us? Be muted. Don't touch your screen if you are not sure of how to manage yourself. Okay. I see hands up. I'll take all the questions. Let me finish the background. Then we are ready for unit two. Okay. Now, so I was saying that for factual statements, you are only describing what is there objectively. Now you understand. Look at the three words. It's a description, describing, decoding. A description of what is there objectively. That's factual statement, which is first a type of what declarity. Then the second type is what? Value judgment, which what? Prescribes what should be there subjectively. So it is prescribing before you see, you already have a view. It's a prescription of what should be there. Look at the language, should, it's a prescription, not what is there. So maybe this is how things are done here. But you say, but this shouldn't be done. Your language has now become what? Value, you're saying we sh it is wrong to behave this way. You think it shouldn't be so, that's a prescription. So when I say she is corrupt, it's a prescription, corruption is not, an objective to that is based on how I see it. That girl is impolite. This is a so and so and so government. When you use value terms, it is wrong to talk back at your supervisor. The expression, it is wrong, is a value judgment. You should know that as the second type of what declarative or second type of statement or proposition or assertion. So, value judgment prescribe what should be the case. How does it do it? Subjectively, depends on who is speaking. So that the same person that I say is a good guy, for you may be a bad guy. The sister that I say, she's so beautiful. Look at the expression. She is beautiful. That is a declarative. It can be true or false. But what type of declarative is that? It is a value judgment. Why do you say so, doc? Well, it's because I use the word beauty. That is a value term. The beauty of a person is a subjective matter. Who is right and who is wrong? If I say Amma is beautiful, and you say Amma is not beautiful, can you impose it on me, your view? No. But if I say Amma is taller than her elder sister, and you say, no, 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 she's not taller than her elder sister, we can objectively agree, put the two together. It is a matter of observation. But put Amma there and put her sister there and say Amma is more beautiful than her sister. And let me say, no, 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 her sister is more beautiful than her. We can look and look and look and will not disagree or agree. Excuse me, we will not agree. And no one can falter one of us. You see that? Because beauty is not like taller. That's the whole point. So certain concepts, certain statements, certain propositions, when we make them, they are only describing what is there. Whilst for others, they are prescribing. That's the second type of declarative, even though both of them are making a statement of truth, something that can be either true or false. How they do it and how we determine the actual truth or falsity is what distinguishes a factual from a value judgment. Then the third one is what definitions, which gives meaning. That is where the, the expression is a statement. Yes, it is trying to make it, it's making a claim of truth. It has a truth value, yes, but it is not a value judgment and neither is it a factual statement. I'm actually telling you how to use the word, give you the meaning of that unknown word, okay? So it's important to know that there can, there can be what overlap. An expression may be factual at the same time, a definition. So I sum it up this way and my group members, you already have that. I say my group, those I met on Saturday, not necessarily my group. All the three groups I met. 
I give three examples to help you distinguish a factual statement from a value judgment in a definition. I said, one, a bachelor is sitting under the tree. A bachelor is sitting under the tree. That was one. Two, a bachelor is an unmarried adult male. That's the second one. Okay. Then the third one, a bachelor has a good conscience. And I was hoping that those three will show you that in all instances, they are declaratives. They are making statements of truth. However, the one that says a bachelor is sitting under the tree is a description of what is out there, which could be true or false. So it's a factual statement. It could be that he's not a bachelor. It could be that he has 10 children in the village. He has just come to the city pretending not to be married, okay? But it will still not take away from the fact that that expression is a factual statement. How do we determine whether he is actually a bachelor or not? By observation. I can't have my point of view of what it means to be a bachelor. No, you see that. If I do, then I'm no longer using the language literally. We will get there shortly. So I'm saying that a bachelor is sitting under the tree is a factual statement. It can be factually true or factually false. Why? It's a description of what is there objectively. Then two, I said a bachelor is an unmarried adult male. That's a definition. I'm trying to show you how to use the word bachelor, the meaning of the word bachelor, okay? So you can see the definition and the definitions. That's what we are going to engage, the definitions, okay? And the third one is what? A value judgment. A bachelor has a good conscience. Good. He has good conscience. Someone will say, no, 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 no. A bachelor doesn't have a good conscience. He has a bad conscience. Good, bad, good. Who is, whose own will we accept? It's a value judgment. All right. If you got those three, then we are, I think the tiny little addition was what? When we said moral and non-moral value judgment. When you have a value judgment, sometimes the, the, the judgment is on an issue of what? Morality. Something that has implications on human life and its well-being. There are implications, you see. For example, I gave that also in class. Abortion is evil. Because I use the word evil, the declarative becomes what? A value judgment type. Good, you know that. But this evil is making a prescription of what? Morality, what is right or wrong with implications on human life, if you like, okay? So it becomes a moral value judgment. But if I had said, uh, uh, Aida Powers is a good boxer, Bukum mm, Banku is a a good boxer. That is not a, a moral issue. I have a good phone. It's not a moral issue, really. Even though it's a value judgment. So you use that, I mean, to do your distinction between value judgment, moral, and value judgment, non-moral. I think I did a good job on that for your topic one, the introduction, your finding a, uh, your, your way around in the course. Let me check Inti Apia. Your hand is up. Okay, he sorted. Inti Apia, your hand is up again. Ask your question after you, I'll take Che, and then we move on to topic two. Unmute and ask Che. Go ahead. Inchi Apia, your hand is up, oh. that's what I've called you. If it's not your question, let me take Che, Greta. Okay, so both are not ready. Can I move on, please, guys? Okay, Inti Apia, your hand is still yes, up. Yes, dog, you can move on. All right, thank you. So if it's a question, Inti Apia, I'll give another opportunity then you ask, okay? Very good. I think you, the class is well comported so far. Keep it up. Then we can have a very effective online session that will benefit you. I'm not going to write an exam. You see that you are going to write. So for topic two, we are looking at definitions. Look at the course outline. It's still there. That's how you study in every course in the university. Take the course outline. Take the content you have been given. Look at what the heartbeat of the delivery is. What at all am I supposed to get after the end of the delivery? That's how you study strategically. Okay, because we can say so much whilst we, we lecture or engage you in class, but ultimately you must focus on a certain specific aim or goal, objective for the day. Then you check all the objectives together for the week and then for the semester. 
and then you do very well. Get your A's with A's, okay? Right, so here we see definitely the topic is definitions, and then we are focusing on verbal disputes and substantive disagreements. The textbook gives you some good content with examples on it, and we are going to help you open them out. So what should you know, the lessons in this topic? You should know connotation and denotation by the time we finish. You should have the six types of definitions, fingertips, fingertips. That one, you have to have it like a <laughs> quick, 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 okay? The six types. You must know open textured and well-defined terms. These are words, concepts. When do we call it a concept open texture or describe it as open texture? And when do we describe it as well-defined? See that, you must know that also. So if you are making your own notes there, target some of them, say this one, I'll catch it before the lecture ends. Then there is a, a topic or a lesson that you must cover also, diagnosing problems with definitions. When we have, we give you definitions, you should be able to detect errors or problems with how we are defining a word at this stage of your tutelage, you must get that and be able to apply it. So if I come to class, for example, and you ask me, Doc, please, what is uh, logic? And I say, oh, logic is when you are logical in the way you reason. You should be able to find a problem with that and label it well. That's what we are going to teach you. There's a problem, it's called Tartalogo, secular, okay? We'll see in, in a GP. And then finally, still in this topic that we hope to conclude and conclude well, not just conclude, oh, but conclude well in, in today, we will be able to cover verbal disputes and how they differ from what substantive disagreements. All right, so that's what we want to achieve. God help us all. Amen. We move. Now, I can stop sharing this one and go quickly to the slides, which were also sent to you. In the past, I would send all the slides at once, but I noticed that sometimes when they are all there like that, you get overwhelmed, sort of. So I give two or three at a time, or one at a time, so that students can learn in a coordinated manner, and guided. And all the slides are there. Those that have access to my academic channel, if you search for Dr. Nancy Miles, Baffer, no, there's no Baffer, there's so Dr. Nancy Miles, Jimfi on YouTube, you should find me. I think I'm, I, I'm wearing something right there. Now, find that channel. You could go to the, what's the name of this thing? The playlists. And then you look for UGRC 150 from 20, I think 2020, 2021, and currently 2022. Because the content hasn't changed much, you can rely on the delivery, the content itself, not the pedagogical issues, like when we are writing IE and stuff like those ones will change per the semester. But the content itself, you may find some things worthy there for your refreshing if you want to. Okay. But we will deliver as if you have not seen it anywhere. That is what we are committed to doing. Let's start for topic two. Any questions? All right, if there are no questions, I see anytime there's a question, don't hesitate, just keep your hand up. I'll, I'll pause and address it. We are going to look at... Uh, definitions. Precious, go ahead with your question, please. Precious, your hand is up, and I've called you, please. Um, precious. Madam, please. Ah, go ahead. I do call you. Madam, go please, ahead. this is not precious, but I have a question. I saw Precious's hand. Okay, if Precious is not ready, then Napisa, can go ahead. Uh, okay, it's okay. I wasn't seeing the screen, but now I can see. Please, can you? Can you, you my, thank you, Nafisa. Get your video off. I don't know how your video came on. I deactivated that. Disable it quickly. Huh. Please disable your video. Don't do that online. <laughs> and if you can United Nations Secretary General, so I'll go and pull that for you. <laughs> disable it quickly. Disable all the cameras, okay? When you have an online, unless it's really required of you, don't, don't show your videos. No one is interested in seeing what is happening around you there, okay? It was you, a mistake. I know, I know, I know, my dear. Don't worry. Just the, the activity. I'm, I'm going to even set it back again. I don't know how it is that allow camera for it. But I said no to that. Or I didn't say. Okay. I'm saving so that we don't have that challenge. You, 
Now we can move on to our topic two. How many of you saw the, the, the recording, uh, the slides I sent you for topic two? If you did, put up your hand. Don't talk, just raise your hand. I'm trying to take, to check. You saw the slide, very good. Keep, you, keep your hands going up. I want to, I'm, I'm making an assessment of a kind, quick. How many of you saw it? Keep your hands going, I'm counting. Oh, 47 of you, but currently I see 390 something, almost 400 students, and still counting. Keep your hand up, if you did, very good, 58. I'm not saying you know everything inside. I just want to know if you saw that, oh, they put up some slides for topic two. That's all, very good, well done, well done. That will help us. So we will quickly go to our shared slide, which everyone can see now, I'm told. All right, so can I have someone read what they see on the screen? Let me move quickly up, topic two. Every definition, definitions, connotations, denotations, every definition has two aspects, the meaning connotation of the word and the particular example that the meaning refers to denotation. The denotation. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm myself lost. I don't know. <laughs> I can't see my my screen. I'll find it shortly. Okay. Just a minute. Let me stop sharing and then reshare. So I'll see okay. where I am. Okay. Um, okay. So we have it. We'll do some very strategic learning. Everyone will be amazed. And you understand too. Aha. Uh -huh. So we are going to look at, please, now you see the, the main, the first slide, right? It has groups 10 and 11, main campus groups 50 and 51. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. Yes, ma Those are my details there, so that you don't have too many excuses. Now I can move, we are here. Good. Definition, sister, will read, please. Okay, sure. Yeah. Every definition has two aspects. The meaning, connotation of the word and the particular examples that the meaning refers to the denotation. Very good. So whenever we have a definition, think of it as having two aspects. Let's have one example of a definition. Like a, a bachelor is an unmarried man. That one is very simple. So when we say someone is a bachelor, we mean he's an unmarried man. When we say a sister, we mean, uh, we mean what? A biological female sibling she's my sibling that's what the sister is okay so those are examples of definitions now we are telling you on slide number one that whenever you you see a definition immediately let something come into your mind that a definition has two aspects to it two aspects i didn't say two parts and I didn't say two types. Look at the word I used. I said, you are a critical mind. You want to be careful about language. Before you conclude, listen, okay? If you study, then you will pass. If you wash my car, I'll give you tenga. Then the person will come to you and say, hey, dog, but you said you give me tenga. I said, if, if you wash my car, there's a condition attached to it. If, say, say, okay? So we want to train you to have that skill and add it to what you have already. Connotation, denotation, those two words describe two aspects of a definition. Now, what do we mean? So I've changed my slide now. When I said a sister is a female sibling or a bachelor is an unmarried adult male, let's stick to one so that you can understand quickly. A bachelor is an unmarried adult male. That's a definition. The, the word a bachelor is what we don't know. And an unmarried adult male is what is being used to help us understand a bachelor. So we know that they are showing us how to use the word bachelor. Remember the three types of declaratives. The second one is what? Uh, the third one we learned was what? Definition. So that's what we are focusing on now in this unit. A bachelor is an unmarried adult male. Now my question to the class is, you are looking for a bachelor's degree, BA, 
Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science. Perchance, <laughs> may I ask, are you looking for an unmarried man's degree? <laughs> you see, no. No, that is not what you are looking for. The degree you are looking for is called bachelor. But you don't mean an unmarried adult male's degree. That is not what you are looking for. So it means we are using the word bachelor, but we are using it with a different meaning than what we, we gave when we defined bachelor many moments ago. Okay? That means the word bachelor can have more than one meaning, more than one connotation. There we go. So that is the meaning of connotation. Connotation of a word or a definition. When we say a definition has a connotation and a denotation, we are just telling you that whenever you see one word being defined there or a word, a word standing there, let me say that we have a word standing there like that. Know that it can connote several meanings. It can have several meanings. It can stand for several descriptions of something. So a bachelor can be an unmarried adult male. A bachelor could also be a degree that is earned in the university at first entrance. A bachelor could be a type of pattern. A bachelor could, and so on and so forth. Even at some one flower, I'm told, is called the bachelor's flower. Okay, so what? So don't think that whenever you hear me say bachelor, get me the bachelor's. It, you should think that I'm asking you to go and get an unmarried man or get me an unmarried man. That would be a, a poor sign for a critical thinker. You must know that words connote different meanings and based on the specific connotation, there I'm going to introduce the next one. You are able to tell the particular denotation that the connotation refers to. So the denotation of a word will now be what? The particular instances that that definition points to. If I define a bachelor as an unmarried adult male, I have given you one of its connotations, what it means. Based on that, you will call Kofi Kwame Kojo, the particular Kofi Kwame Kojo, who are not married, you see, and are adult males. You will call those particular ones what the denotation of what bachelor defined as what an unmarried adult male. So if you see on my screen down there, I say the given connotation then will determine the specific denotation. That is the particular instances or examples referred to. Now, my lady, read, isn't a piece of reading? Read the examples of different Please, connotations. Teresa. Teresa, thank you. Teresa, please read the, the different connotations of the word chair that you see on the screen. And then we can move to the next slide. Okay, sure. Understanding. Look at the different interpretation of the chair. One, the chair is the furniture to sit on. Two, chair is the head of an institution. Three, chair is the person who sets the affairs of a meeting. Not very good. It's okay. The, Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You can see, therefore, that when we use the word chair, or if we want to define chair, we can have different connotations for it. What I'm sitting on is a, a chair. But when I say the woman coming is the chair for our meeting today, I'm not saying she is the one we will sit on <laughs> for the meeting today. So I'm, I am using a different sense, a different meaning, a different use of the word chair. Okay, and, and that's what I said with the, the word bachelor. And that's what you can think of for the word sister. If I say a sister is a uh, the sister visited today. You, you, you shouldn't think that that immediately means my biological sibling. Not necessarily. The Roman sister, the nun, is also described as a sister. In fact, at church, we address, address, address ourselves, brothers and sisters in the Lord. But your mother is not my mother. Look at my skin color. Look at yours. You see that? So there are different senses of words different meanings we give to words, different connotations of a word, very good. And based on the specific connotation, you can determine the denotation, the particular examples you should point to. So if I'm looking for degrees, that is bachelor as a degree end in the university, 
the examples, the denotations that we can have, the particular instances will be what? A con certificate, a philosophy certificate, sociology certificate, if you like. Those will be there. But if I'm looking for bachelor, the same word bachelor, but where I mean an unmarried adult, I'll call human beings. And if I say bachelor and I meant a, a, a flower or the button, bachelor's button, you will go and pick buttons for the tailor to use to sew. Meanwhile, the word was bachelor, but different denotations will come depending on what the connotation you give it. Very good. If you get that, you understand equivocation, which is short, uh, shortly ahead of us. Okay. On the screen now, you see examples with the word table. So the legislature agreed to table the motion for another day. The rows and columns in the table are too complex. Your breakfast is already on the table. Here we are applying the different connotations of the word table in different examples, okay? Table means I will put it up for discussion, the first use of it. The legislature agreed to bring it up for discussion for another day. It's an issue that they will bring up later. That's how they are using the word table here. The second one says the rules and columns in the table graph or Excel sheet, something like that. And the third one, the furniture table that you and I know. Now, there comes a logical error that is associated with the discussion I've just had with you that you must be minded of as a critical mind, not to commit it, and also not to allow, it, allow yourself to be outweighed by it when people speak or people argue or people reason, sometimes people equivocate. It is not something to, to be proud of. So we want to tell you, so you know. If you know that skills, you are able to play on that, to, to, to be a good rapper, if you like, or a good poet. You can create nice poetry with that. That would be positive. But where you are using it for argumentation, you will be manipulated. So let's see what we mean by equivocation. Equivocation is not something you should be proud of. I've said that already. Thank you. You can now drop your, your hand so that if someone really has a question, I'll know. I, I think the hands are for those who believe they had read or they, they've seen the slides. Okay, so keep your hands down. So if there's a question, I'll quickly notice. I like this class already. You are very comported. Eh? Keep it up. One or two uh, uh, <laughs> menses may come around, but we are let who we'll, we'll snip them out like something. Okay, so keep it that way. If you keep it that way, you do very well in the course already, okay? Yo, so let me continue with what I was saying with the equivocation. Now see, different uses of the word, uh, where am I? Different uses of the word, So it's just a minute, too. I'm lost again. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm not lost. Hey, where am I? <laughs> uh, I'm showing you of the word free. Free, that is it. The person is using the word free or freedom equivocally. So when is equivocation committed? If more than one of the connotations of the word, more than one, meaning, of one word is used in the same context without any signal of the shift. You see, it's not just you're using it, but you use it as if they refer to the same. Okay, you are using different meanings of that one word in the same context to give the impression that it is the same meaning that runs through. We will have a problem with you. If more than, on the screen I say, if more than one connotation of a word is used in the same context, you can even add, to, as if they refer to the same thing without any signal of the shift. And most of the time, the intention is to manipulate or to persuade the speaker that we accuse you of committing equivocation. There's a fine example I always refer to. If I say, we are looking for a responsible person to keep the post of a secretary here. We want someone who is responsible. This is our job there. If you are employing people, we want someone who is responsible. Then you are the applicant. You say, oh, then I think I'm, I'm, I'm the one you are looking for. Then we say, why do you say so? You say, oh, because the company I, I, I came from, whenever something got missing, they said, I am responsible. 
Now that is equivocation. You see how you're going to put yourself into trouble. We are looking for a responsible person. That sense, that use of the word responsible, it's not the same as I am. They, they, they said I am responsible for tea free all the time from where I came from. Therefore, I qualify for that. That is equivocation. Uh, there was another one to I gave this medical food. It said that uh, 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 I'll find it. I'll find it. Someone is, uh -huh. yeah. when someone is mad, apologies, eh? but when someone is mad, they have to be institutionalized. Now, Yaya is madly in love with Kofi. Therefore, I think Yaya must be institutionalized. Institutionalized means put into a, a place, you know, uh, secluded so that we can take care of her. Look at if you are mad, then you must be institutionalized to receive health care. Yaya is madly in love with Kofi. So you conclude, therefore, that she must be put into an institution. But the first use of the word mad and the second use of the word Yaya is madly in love. Don't coincide. You are using the word mad repeatedly, but the meanings associated with the two are not the same. Yet you want to make it look as if they refer to the same thing. That is what we call equivocation. Okay. Now, this one is an example that I, I tweaked from your textbook. I don't see why women are always complaining that they do not enjoy the same freedom as men do. It is a free country. That already is an equivocation. You say women complain that they do not enjoy the same freedom as men do. The freedoms of men and women, are they the same? Are they the, when we talk about the freedoms of men and women, why do you want to equate it to being in a free country? I mean, do men menstruate? Apologies, guys. Do men go through mood swings? When two people, a man and a woman, adults, married, get busy at that time of the night and, one, and they, they create a child, who carries it? We can go on and on and on. So naturally, I mean, nine months of your life, you have to support some, some, someone inside. So if you were carrying two, like by the grace of God, I did, you will be eating for three. When someone can walk around and still say he's a virgin, <laughs> no one can say, can you, can you say you are a virgin? And whatever it comes with, you see that. So the freedoms that women have in that sense of it, take note because men can also make a case of it. A different kind of case. That's why their freedoms, in this sense of the word freedom, are not the same. Now, here is someone arguing to make a case that look at how the person concludes. Everybody in Ghana here is free to do what they like. So sheepish. Uh, maybe the word is not sheepish. Empty. If this person is defending you at court, you, you will never uh, win any case. The debt is not there. The person is not deep. <laughs> Everybody in Ghana here is free to do what they like. Really? Go open your mouth and say things on it. You see, that's a different sense of the word free. We, we can say in a sense of it that this is a free country. Yes, there are no restrictions to some certain things. In that sense of the word, it will, it will apply. But it is in this same country that some people are in prison. They don't decide when they want to wake up or who they want to sleep with or whether they want to sleep by their something, you know, their waist. They, they are given what they will eat. They don't decide that this morning I want to go jogging uh, along so and so straight. Which gate are you going to come out of? It is in this country. <laughs> so you have to understand that when you are just using the word free, free, free to too far, let try centers are, you are equivocating. And if the speaker doesn't know, the hearer, the one listening, must prompt, excuse me, or objection, my lord, or if it is in the family because you say, oh, please calm down. I think you are confusing matters here. You're not saying that uh, uh, Ghana is not a free country. That sense of it is true. That's one connotation. There you go with your critical of the word freedom. But here we are discussing how to bridge that imbalance we have between, say, men and women when it comes to their freedoms. It is another sense of the word freedom. That's why I gave you some instances. You, people say we are free, uh, human beings are free to do what they do. Did you choose to be born male or female? Briar, you found yourself male, Sister Adwa. You, <laughs> you found yourself, Sister Adwa. Did you choose to be born in Africa or Asia or America? You found yourself born there. How free are you? 
in that sense of it. Okay. But what happens perhaps in our state Ghana, I say perhaps in our state Ghana, may not be like what happens in another state. So in that sense of it, we say Ghana is a free country. America is a free country. But there are prisoners there, they are not free. So these are different connotations of the word freedom. And the speaker here put all of them together and thinks he has made a good case. But you are there, you are a critical mind, you see it and object and ask for clarity so that the debate can move forward. I want uh, Theresa, if you are still there, read this one and then someone else can continue reading for us. Thank you. Examples of equivocation, okay, example two. Yeah, go ahead. I don't see. <laughs> You can say you are ethical person. It is so hard to get you. To your work ethic is so bad. I'm taking it again. Example two. Yeah, yeah. I don't see how you can say you are an ethical person. It is so hard to get you to do anything. Your work ethic is so bad. Example yeah. three. Yeah. Your philosophy helps you argue better. But do we really need the, do we really need to encourage people to? Act? There is enough hostility in this world. I'm taking it again. Example three. Sure, philosophy helps you argue better. But do we really need to encourage people to? Act? There is enough hostility in this world. Thank you. So you would see. Thank you so much. So you see that the first sense of the word argue. Let's look at the third one. It's straightforward. The first sense of the word argue is to tell you that philosophy helps you to present evidences to support your claim better. It is a skill, you learn it. So you know how to argue. Argue here is not exchange of words. It's not disputing to, you know, to the point of throwing blows and whatnot. No, in fact, when we use argue this way, it's a positive attribute. It means you don't say things that you can't ground with evidence. That's the sense of the word argue that is being used here. One connotation of it. Now, the second, the second part of it is about, do we really need to encourage people to argue? Here, you can tell. The person has shifted meanings. Argue here, me ask, should we encourage people to exchange words to the point of, you know, husband and wife argument, money? So if you are not careful, eh, the sister will be telling the husband that, oh, you are telling me that I like to argue. Then I'm really good because I'm helping. Make sure that we, we present evidence to support our claim. Meanwhile, the man means you are too talk talk. You, you, say, oh, you like disputing too much. But if you don't clarify that, the two are equivocating. Okay, so this person's claim is that the, the course philosophy trains you and helps you to argue better. This is a positive sense of the word argue, one meaning of the word argue. Then he said, But do we really need to encourage people to argue? But that's the different connotation of the word argue. Then how do we know that that's what the person, look at what she ends it with. There is enough hostility in the world already. The world is already hostile. We shouldn't teach people how to argue. The person has equivocated slam. You have to find it and point it out. Very good. We are done with equivocation. It's very important. You see it in, in a thread. But because we have seen connotations, I want to quickly show you how people equivocate when they apply when they switch from one meaning of the word, one connotation of the word to the other, as if they mean the same, without notice to the listener, then they equivocate. It helps your understanding. So when we get to unit three, we just be a brush over. And then we have one. Very good. On the screen now, you see types of definitions. When we did connotation and denotation, we did what? Aspects of a definition. If you want to know the parts, look at my, my word, the parts of a definition, there are two, the definiendum <laughs> and the definience. A bachelor is an unmarried adult male. Which word don't we know? We don't know bachelor. So that's the definiendum. What do we know? An unmarried adult male, that's the definience. So, you use the definitions, which you know, to help the, the person listening eh, understand what a definitum is, a bachelor. That's the logic behind definitions. You use what is known to help the person understand what is not known. So I say, oh, you don't know bachelor. Look at an unmarried adult, that's bachelor. You are giving meaning 
Okay, so every definition has two parts. The part of what definiendum and definiers. Two aspects. What are they? Connotation and denotation. Now on our screen, we are looking at what types of definitions. Lexical. That is the meaning you get from dictionary. So you don't know the meaning of so and so. Oh, look it up in the dictionary. Then you go into the dictionary and read the meaning. The, the, the kind of definition where you get meanings from the dictionary, the lexicon. It's what we call lexical definition. Finito. No, this thing, no qualms about it. Don't do any designer reading. No, it's straightforward. Meanings that we get from the dictionary, from the lexicon. Dictionary is lexicon, eh? Is what we call lexical definition. Finished. Sometimes when we don't know a word, we don't look it up in the dictionary. We point to it. If you are with your expatriate friend who has come to visit for a conference. And he's asking you, yeah, what is food, 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 food? He has heard that there's an Asante food or an Akan food called fufu. And he wants to know what is fufu. How are you going to explain? That you have several options. You can point to the dishes on the table. When you have gone to the table to eat, you can point to one and say, you see that one? Pointing to the food, say, that is fufu. You are giving him or her what? Meaning. But you are doing it ostensibly by pointing to it. You need to. So that definition that points to, to give meaning is what we call ostensive. Sometimes you don't point to, you demonstrate. So he might want to know what is a, a doa, a dance. You know, a child may ask you, what is color blue? You can't say color blue is a color. He already knows. He says, what is color blue? Mommy, auntie says, when we come home. <laughs> we should ask you, what is color yellow? Don't say color yellow is a color. He already knows. So you may take the flag of Ghana and point to the, to the yellow inside and say, that is color yellow. You have pointed to give me ostensibly. You can dance to show adua. You show them, this is, this is it. See what I'm doing, that's adua. You have given meaning how ostensibly. You can drive to show the person in the front seat. Like if you want to accelerate, this is how you do it. If you are negotiating a cap, this is how you do it. When you are doing it, you are showing it what you are giving meaning ostensibly. Those who braid hair, fashion designer, or you know, you cut clothing, hmm? fashion designer, or you do hair. You can, the apprentices will be around you. Then you cut for them to show. Sometimes you are not even talking. But if you talk, it has become a different uh, type of definition. Okay, we are getting to that shortly. But you do it for them to see. So you you cut the, the patterns, crumb, 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 and you put the cover here. They, they are standing by you. That thing that you are demonstrating for them to see how to cut. Okay, that's ostensive definition. You won't forget that. I could ask you to create an ostensive definition and explain why you think it is so for your two marks for short, uh, short answer question in the medicine. You should be able to write that. Don't write as long as it. You should be able to think quickly and show an ostensive definition. Okay, then operational, then you give the steps to follow or instruction you are instructing on how you will arrive at the definition okay so it's that type of definition where you give steps that one can follow to get to what the meaning remember definition is what an unknown word then you are using the known to get to the unknown the unknown is the definition so i don't know cake if i don't know cake and you are a caterer and i ask you what is cake and you want to show me cake, you can show me cake by showing me the steps that will take me to cake, the steps that will take me to fufu, the steps that will take me to so-and-so place or thing. When you do that, you are, you are giving me new words operationally. You don't know how to uh, uh, do the, uh, what, what is it, uh, cake? Oh, cake is what you get if you, get, if you buy flour, sugar, egg. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Put them together in this sequence. First, put this. Put that. Put that. When you finish, mix. Pour. <laughs> Smear some magic into the thing. <laughs> Pour the whatever into the, the mixture into the bowl. Leave to settle. Put in an oven. Bake over. Oh, then what comes out is cake. I could have just pointed at a finished cake there ostensibly, but maybe I don't have one there. But I could show you cake how operationally give you the steps to follow to arrive at it. That is professional definition. Then I'll move quickly to 
stipulative definition. It's also on your screen. You should be looking on the screen. I'm showing you the types of definition. Stipulative by fiat or by agreement. When we stipulate meanings, it means we, we, we are using the language for ourselves. We are creating a meaning that works for us. Humcho. Vandals will say we are going to charge. When the vandal says he's going to charge, you don't go for your charger. Mm. That's not what they mean. <laughs> home chop is home food. Eh? What's up? Vantman girls, I, I always repeat that. I say, when they say Osmo, they check. When I was a student, that's how they say Osmo, Osmosis. It's how sometimes the student will be in class quietly sitting at the corner there. Then someone, oh, what does it say? Osmo, Osmo, we understand. Osmosis, the transfer of, hey, the movement of what? <laughs> that was Osmosis is the movement of pollen grains from the anta to the stem. Hey, Akoyabo. <laughs> osmosis is no movement of pollen grains from anywhere to anywhere. Osmosis, <laughs> that one is pollination, right? So I'm saying that we have terms that we coin. It is not institutionalized. Take note. The institutionalized one will become theoretical definition. But the stipulative ones, we agree to use the word that way. Like jargons. So if you are a member, you understand. I can come to lecture and I always say that. So those who are playing my videos, there, you will see that I'm repeating some of the examples. I'll come to lecture and tell the classroom, when I ask for water, please give me a bottle of gin. When you hear me say, give me water, I'm actually asking for gin. <laughs> or oh, Google, or Sobol, something else. You know. So before the student body, I may be teaching, I say, excuse me, please give me what I am. I'm talking to the class rep now. Between myself and him or her, we have a stipulative definition, something we have agreed on by fiat. So he will go out and everybody thinks he's going to get water. That's the general meaning of that word, water is there. The Lesica one will be there. But the stipulative will be what we have stipulated for ourselves. So when he brings it and I'm drinking, we are I'm lecturing everybody, oh, talk, talk is really flowing. <laughs> Boy, you know, Mabo, Mabo Sram. Okay, I'm totally drunk because stipulative meanings are for members only. So you won't know. You can be there and they'll talk across your head. They say, oh, it looks like the weather has changed. And they are telling that it looks like the sister has seen through our, our, our uh, duping plan. That's what they are saying. That you'll be there. They say, it looks like the weather has changed. So I think that I will, I will not go and watch the football match again. That's what he's saying. But he means because the sister is too resistant, I think that we will have to decide on another plan. Stipulative meanings. Okay, then the theoretical one, which I already gave suggestions, is an institutionally based meaning. So what the economist, for example, means by inflation is not what you mean when you say, please inflate all the balloons for our decoration. See, we are using inflation, but there's a technical, I mean, just like the word argument that I, I proposed, I, I mentioned a moment ago, that the logician has a word, uh, the meaning that is associated with what technical terms like what argument, validity. Okay, so you cannot confuse, look at, at the law court, if you hear a uh, frontier, Citeris paribus, that's also a concern. If you hear uh, our friends, the man who says he's a lawyer. He's a lawyer. Oh. oh. Then you will know. So there are words that are institution based. Look at the expression water is H2O. H2O. Two molecules of hydrogen, a molecule of oxygen, I think, at room temperature. That is, it's a whole chemistry. When you see water defined as what? H2O. You have to know chemistry. But if you are in the kitchen cooking, will you be calling your, your house girl and say, yeah, yeah, bring me H2. The banku is burning. Bring me H2. Is that what you say? <laughs> your banku will burn, papa. Because yeah, yeah doesn't understand this, your chemistry. The point I'm making is we are learning all these types of definitions. So we we'll know which one applies where and for which reason. How will I teach students of, say, level 100? or class one, let's use that, how to brush their teeth. Will I go and be all technical 
a womb, a womb badge. You have to meet them at their level. How will I market this program, uh, product to make meaning to the target group? Is it a, a, a product I'm trying to sell to uh, my fish manga folks? I have to know how to present it that it will be meaningful to them. We want the people to uh, observe COVID protocols. What is all this big, big, you know, that this, this, uh, trypanosomiasis of the heart of the prognosis would do? Look, they won't even hear what you are saying. They will applaud you. Wow. But they got nothing. You have to present content with a target group in mind. Let it be accessible to them. So depending on the specific focus group or whoever you are trying to make meaning to, if you're a doctor and the person is in front of you and their heart, you have checked and it's a heart problem. You are not going to, I think that you have a heart disease of the heart that is like, uh, you see the heart disease of the heart, a, a state of heart that is, you know, the, the prognosis of your le, le, pro, promo, promo goals, whatever, this has got plenty, I mean, you are not smart. You are not a critical thinker. And you are not reasoning practically. But you are an expert. I respect that. Just that <laughs> expert that cannot do anything for society. Over the bar. The grandpa sitting in front of you is not interested in, you know, the pH level of the dentist. Tell grandpa, tell the little girl, go for it, who has that hole in heart. That we think that is that's this small, tiny this thing that has come to your heart that we are going to work to fill that gap okay so we'll keep you here so that we, we don't get tired we want to monitor you're saying the same thing you're not lying to the patient you shouldn't but don't be oh you know if we look at the size of your left promo code we have to make sure that this one's and so it is trypanosomiasis whatever of this also called common cough the person died before you brought the common cough because the common cough would have made him or her know that it's common. Yeah, we can manage it. You have to be a, a critical thinker. Know theoretical definitions when you are trying to meet an audience that are not experts in the field. Okay, but you can't also go be before an expert group, and then when you go and stand there, you are not deep. You can't show that you know your stuff. That is also problematic. We don't want you to to go for an interview show us whether you know the content then all you are doing is you are playing left right center you have to show that you're an expert so that we will take an expert team to, to meet the imf okay and then they will talk technical language because they are engaging at a technical level so there is a place for every definition some of the times and i think most of them you would have to mix ostensive with operational so you are teaching the person how to drive you are giving the instructions the step by step, and you are doing it alongside. It's more effective, like what we are doing now. So you are writing some, you are reading some, you are listening to some, and we are doing it for you to see. Gradually, you improve better. Okay. One of your essays in my group will come from this topic. See how much time I've spent on it. So be on standby. Okay. Then we move on to the last type of definition, which is what real definition. The same name for that is what ideal definition. It is also called eliminative, and you can still label it as what essential definition. Your textbook gives you some very good content on that. If this one is called real definition, then obviously it tells you that all the others are not real. They are fake. <laughs> they don't do what definitions should do. So which one is the real definition? The one whose definitum can replace the definitions everywhere you use the word in all contexts of its use that's a real definition it's really doing what a definition should do and they are not common at all you you would normally find them in closed deductive studies like mathematics or logic they are empty we'll get there shortly but take note if a definition is real then it means wherever you see the definition it will replace the definition there is no contradiction about that. Now think of the word bachelor. The bachelor is an unmarried adult male. It is not everywhere that you see the word bachelor that it means an unmarried adult male. So that's not a real definition. Sometimes you see bachelor, we have gone through that already. It means what? Patterns. Another time you see bachelor, it means degree. One, one time you see a sister, 
it means a biological female sibling. At that time, it means someone in the Catholic Church, a woman that hasn't, you know, whatever, defiled herself, I think, or married. We can go on and every, almost every word is not really defined. But when you go to, say, math, you can have an even number. It's a number that divides two equal without a remainder. That is divided by two equal without a remainder. Wherever you see even number, it must mean this in mathematics. You can't ask for you, even number has become a number that divides two and leaves a remainder of one. Then you can't do maths. You see that their concepts are closed because the system there is what? A closed system, just like in logic. So the point of a real definition is what? Or an ideal definition or an eliminative definition or, or an essential definition is to show you that their definitions replace their definitions in every context of use. That takes us to second part, or I think the third part, if you like, of our hot unit two. I pause for questions. Let me see. There are hands up. If it's a question, keep it up. If it's to read, please bring it down so I can take the questions. Ayim Jessica, please, if you have a question, ask. Ayim Jessica Corsa, I see Freeman. I see Evelyn Asiedu. If there are no questions, then you would want to keep your hand down, please, so that I can take questions. Evelyn Asiedu's hand is still up. Seven Archery, please put your hand down if it's not, your question has been cleared. If you put just William, we'll have, we'll have a difficulty because there are, I think, 400 or so students now. William Pedier, <laughs> there will be about 30 Williams. Uh, okay, so the hands are going down. Please, I see 11 hands. Are they all questions? Let's take them quickly. Don't waste, don't let us waste time, okay? Let's use the time favorably. Angela and stuff like this don't help. If I see Angela, I see people may start speaking. I don't want to address you, Daniel. Please put your full name there. That's quite a number of Daniels. That's why I didn't call you, okay? We can okay. only have it organized. Yeah. If so, keep keep the names. Of Joyce Lynn Sai. It's just a question. Please ask. I see Tracy. I can't call Tracy. That would be chaotic. Emmanuel Saki. If it's a question, please ask. Okay. So the hands have gone down. Abdul Karim Anvia, I think. Ask your question. Yes. Um. Yes, Doc. Yeah. Good morning, please. Good morning, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yes, please. Um, Doug, uh, the connotation and, and the deconnotation are, I want to understand, like, there's no other clear for me, so uh, I would like so you what, to take it. Yeah, so how do you understand it first? Um, actually, the uh, connotation, uh, the, like, understanding it is like different meaning of words used That's correct. in different Yes, uh, yes. Using one word having more, yes, yes. So one word having more than one meaning is just another yes. thing. One word have, has more than one connotation. Okay. Yes, yes. So but the, the denotation, denotation. How do you understand yeah. denotation? And then that's where I find my problem. Okay, so if you know that bachelor means an unmarried man, yes. then if I ask you to give me examples of bachelor, if I define bachelor as unmarried man, you will yes. point to particular human beings as what bachelor bachelors you see that oh. those okay. particular human beings i'm pointing to are the denotations okay uh -huh. but if i had changed the meaning of bachelor to say a degree that we earn in the university if you ask me for particular examples now you are asking me for the denotations for that that is a degree earned in the university i won't be able to point to men human beings as the denotation see the denotation will change so the denotation only means the examples of the particular things you are referring to per your connotation. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. You are yeah, welcome. Please put your hand down now for me. Thank you. Let me take Dennis, Dennis Dokosi. If it's a question, Dennis, go ahead. I won't be able to call Eva. Understand, okay? Good morning, madam. Good morning, sir. Go ahead. Please, can you 
you just bring the ostensive and the operational for me. Ostensive means you, you either point to it. So ostensive, you only point to it. Okay, I can give you the ostensive definition of BAM library. I will just stand at a good angle and you say, I say, you don't know BAM library. And I point. Yeah. If I point, I am giving you meaning. I've not said anything, okay? But the operational one, I could be in my office and tell you, oh, you don't know BAM library. Okay, take a car at gate. Let it come through the main road in the middle there. Let, them, let it come, when it gets to the runabout, let him turn right, left, okay. look up. That's what I'm like. I have given you operational definition, the steps to follow. See that? Uh, okay. That's the difference. If that helps, then we can take your welcome. Say, please drop your hand now. Then we can take Nafisa. Nafisa, is yours a question? Please ask. I still see 13 hands up. I want to clear them quickly. If they are not questions, you help the class when you put your hands down. We have some few minutes left. Okay. Okay, they are all questions. Nafisa, go ahead. If Napisa is not ready, Daniela Ayaba, please go ahead, please. Madam, please, I'm ready. Ask your question, my lady. Go ahead. Um, I want to what is the striking difference between a connotation and equivocation? Equivocation is a crime you commit when you are playing on the different connotations without signaling your audience. So you are using the different meanings. Okay, you are even using the different connotations of one word as if they mean the same. I mean, if I say I'm looking for a responsible person to take up this post in my office, and you say, well, then I'm the one because the office okay. I came from, because the office I came from, whenever something gets missing, they said I am responsible. For it. You are equivocating. You are using the different meanings of the word responsible interchangeably in the same context, but they don't mean the same. See that? So being a responsible person, as you take care of things, you make sure things are done appropriately in, at their own time, what you doing. It's not the same as being responsible as you are the one that caused something. They're not the same. So I'm saying that equivocation is a crime. It's a logical error that occurs when you confuse the different connotations. You oscillate between the different connotations of a word without a signal. But the connotation of a word just means, or a word, a word has, having a connotation just means it has different meanings. That's all. I hope that helps. You can play back the video when you get it and read your slides as well. Okay, the textbook gives you quite a number also of examples to help you understand it. Right, let me take Ayaba Daniela. Madam, please, I wanted to know in what way is uh, the theoretical definition different from the stipulative definition? I think I mentioned that too. I said one is institutionalized. Like if I say water is H2O, hydrogen, oxygen, this H2O is what? two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. In chemistry, it's a chemistry thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's an academic discipline. It's not like you and I agree that when I'm passing menses, I'll call it osmosis. Osmosis has a technical meaning, but you and I can use that term differently. Okay, so that one is stipulated. We can say we are going to charge. Oh dear. We can say we are going to charge. The vandals can say they are going to charge. They are going on demonstration. In the past, that's what it means. I don't know if they've changed it. Okay. But if you hear charge, you will go and take your charger and get your phone. If I say, let's go and charge, you will go for your, and you say, should I bring brush charger or iPhone charger? But they are not talking about <laughs> brush. So stipulative definitions are coined. They are jargons. They are not, they don't have institutional backing. It's not anything that is back by institute, that's the difference. That's a striking difference, if, if it helps. All right, I will take two more and then we can continue, but the hands are many. Uh, Jerry John, Ike, Jerry John, go ahead.
Jerry John, can you hear us? Please go ahead, your hand is up. If not, let me take uh, Josephine. Josephine, is your surname Aja, Ajabui? Okay, Josephine, go ahead. Madam, please, it's a mistake, sorry. Please drop it for me, thank you. Drop it, all right. You. Okay, so we will move on. You can always send me your queries directly if it happens that we are not able to take them. I'll, I'll give a third set of questions before we close at 10.30. But let's make some progress. Sometimes by the time we move on to the next slide, the question you had would be cleared up. Cleared up. Okay. So now we move on to open texture terms versus closed concepts. And it is coming from how we understood real definitions here. A real definition will have its definiendum and definiens being interchangeable in all contexts, wherever you use it, wherever you use even number, you can put in a divisible by two equally without a, a remainder. The meaning won't change. But you can't do that for bachelor. I just said that. You can't do that for justice. You can't do that for these several terms that we have. Why? Because those terms are open. Text chat. When you read the textbook, you'll get some more flesh to that. Now, see, someone read this for me then. Let me call someone. Any good reader who believes he has a good background, please read quickly. Open yes, text chat. Like open class concept. Thank you, a madam. Go ahead. A word is open text chat or essentially contestable if it has several connotations into brackets meanings and therefore any given meaning can be contested even within the same discipline. Example mm. of such terms are family, justice, fidelity, democracy, etc. Very good. I, I enjoyed that reading also. Very good. Now listen, you are a critical mind. You must know this about definitions. A definition, a, a one word can be open text chat. Its opposite is what? Well-defined concept. So either the term is open text chat or it is well-defined. But we are focusing now on what? Open text chat. Look at another name for open text, open class concept. It means that particular word and its offered meaning can be contested. You can argue, you can contest it, even within the same discipline. You can insist that, look, a family, someone is not family to me only because he or she is biological, has my blood, so to speak. Then we will all be family in the world. Then Zelensky and uh, Putin are family members, if you're a Christian, because we all came from Adam. It's Adam's blood running to us. <laughs> okay, so someone can insist that, look, someone is not oh there. Someone can insist that a family is a biological relation one that shares blood with me, whatever that means. I've said even by that definition, everybody will be family to you then because we have one blood if we are Christians and we believe that all oh, you are religious and you believe that there's only one common ancestry to all creation. Other person will say, no, 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 family is not. The family is the one that will stand by you regardless. You see, there's a brother that sticks closer. Eh, excuse me, there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. That's someone's conception of family. So I, I, I mentioned earlier, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, the church family, it's not talking about physical blood. That you are sick at the hospital looking for AS or O positive. If you are family, then the church people should gather and come and give you blood. But they are always not your own or something like that because it is not a biological thing. What am I showing you? The word family is open texture. It means different things to different people and you cannot insist on one without the other. Remember value judgment. It, it's place here, okay? Some people, their dogs are more family to them than even the house girl or house boy. Look at the word justice. Some things, justice is the rule of might, the one who is strong should rule. Something new, justice is treating everybody equally, but that can be problematic. If it means equal treatment, then when we have special students with visual impairment, and you give an exam, 
and the time allocated is one hour. Or we have a special student that has lost, you know, through a, a very sad situation, has lost all their fingers. Very brilliant student. You want them to come and type. They have given one hour. Everybody, you say treat everybody equally. So one hour for everyone. He doesn't have fingers. Please, hello. When will he finish finding A, B, and C to type with, with the fists that God has left him or her with by the grace of God? You see that? So another person said, no, 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 that can be just. Treating everybody equally may not be just. So we are all in the queue at the hospital. You came with a certain spot on your skin that you want the doctor to advise you on which cream to use. Someone has a heart emergency from an accident. The heart has popped out. It has to be put back in. You say, come and join the queue. We should be treated equally. First come, first help. Who told you? <laughs> you see that? So there has to be, for, this is another person's view, justice within the same discipline. There has to be an understanding of what it means to treat people just. Just treatment may mean that you may have to discriminate. Eh? And that discrimination must be done in a fair way. So the person says justice is fairness, not equal treatment. We could go on and on and on. I'm showing you why you can't have one meaning that you think is conclusive when it comes to a word like justice, fidelity. You have one husband or one wife, let's use wife. You have one wife and you are, you are just trying to explore a girlfriend. That is infidel, infidelity for some group of people. But for another place, if you have one, even two and three and four, you are rather a good man. <laughs> So the word uh, fidelity or infidelity is an open class concept. And therefore, when you are engaging it, you have to know that the essence, yeah, what it means, oh dear, it means yeah. what its meaning is essentially, look at the word essence, can be contested. Don't go about thinking that what you think of it or how you conceptualize the notion of fidelity, justice, was the other one, democracy. For some, democracy means what? Say some, make I also say some. Talk, make I talk. If you are not allowing people to talk, they don't think it's a democracy, free speech. For others, democracy means what? Let the people rule. Democratia. So there is no single authority. Let the people rule. We can go on and on and on. So these are showing you that the essence, see why we call it open class concept. It's essence, what the word means essentially. Essence means that which makes it what it is. That essence can be contested. You can argue about it. It doesn't have a closed meaning. It is an open class concept. I hope you got it. Another question will come from here for your off, off site essay. That's why I took so much time to do that. Okay. Well defined terms, on the other hand, are described as what closed concept. How you define it doesn't allow for alternative, you know. <laughs> alternative ways of thinking of it in that discipline, you can't. So you can't have, like I said, when I was showing you real definitions, I say real definitions occur in deductive studies like math and logic, for example, because they are closed systems. Their concepts are closed, they are well-defined. They don't allow you to have your own interpretation of what you think addition should be. You can't have your own meaning of addition, but I can have my own meaning of family, even as sociology, as a sociology student. I can conceptualize family and contend with the other. No, no, nearly the power one in there. You know, a friend, a brother is the one that helps the other. But you can't have your own meaning of square roots. Square root, then you say you think it's multiplication. Not in maths, not in logic, because they are dealing purely with what structure and what form. Don't give yourself too much credit over there, you logicians and mathematicians. Your, your system is empty of content. It deals with just form and structure. That's why it doesn't admit of what alternative interpretations and perspectives. But most of the time, these two you know, uh, ways of defining a term, eh? well-defined concept and open class concept are mixed. So in a discipline, you have some, some of your terms being what open class, some being what well-defined. I want you to be wary about that. Look on the screen very well. And this, you will be able to distinguish a term that is well defined. It doesn't allow for what alternative uh, uh, interpretations because what it clearly 
There comes the content that is important. You see it in the text. It clearly, a well-defined term clearly shows you all the particular denotations that the term references. That is why we say it is well-defined. It gives you a clear criteria that can help you locate every member in that set in a way that there is no ambiguity. But open class concepts can be ambiguous. You are talking family, you think you are dealing with biological. Before long, uh, uh, church folks have come. Uh, she's her brother, uh, he's her brother in the Lord. When this Usinachi sister, uh, so rest in peace, the whole Christian family community, eh? We're sending you condolences. Ah, this is our sister. How she was skilled. This is Samuel, you know, how she was big. She's your sister. I am Nigerian. <laughs> it is another connotation of it. So you see, from value judgment to connotation, denotation, you see the trail we have entered into what open textured versus well-defined terms. And even if we end here, we have covered everything. But we won't. We'll finish up. Now see. On the screen now, the problems that we can have with definitions. You don't know a word. I say, if you don't know it, look at what? The definitions. So if, if I ask you, what is philosophy? They say, oh, philosophy is the study of the works of Plato. It means I'm saying, if you don't know philosophy, look at the works of what? Plato. What you don't know is the philosophy, definition. Defini what should you look at? Look at the works of Plato. Plato is just one philosopher. So if I define philosophy that way, I have narrowed your understanding of definition. I'm just telling you that the only person you should look at if you want to know philosophy is Plato. What about Socrates, Kant, J.S. Mill? We can go on and on and on. So that is a narrow, it's weak. The weakness with that definition is what? It has left out particular members that should be covered. See that particular denotations have been left out by the way it defined. That's what narrow. The opposite will be what? Broad. If I say uh, a human being, no, let's say it this way. A, a woman is a human being. If this were a definition, this could be factual. But if it were a definition, I say a woman is a human being. I'm saying if you don't know woman, look at human being. I hope that brings it up clearly for you to see. A woman is a human being. I'm telling you that if you don't know woman, look at what? Human being. Hey, then black you also be woman. <laughs> you also be woman. It is broad. How do you do that? Look at it very well. I say a woman is a human being. So I'm saying you don't know woman, look at human being. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, all the brothers will be called women by this definition because it's too broad. You have opened the set so much by your definition to bring in members that do not belong to the denotation of this word. Okay, so broad and narrow, that's how I see it. Now, how about secularity, which is also called begging the question? This is also called what, tautology. You meet it again. When do we say a definition is secular? When you are only repeating the definitions in the definition. Sometimes not a literal repetition. Sometimes you're repeating, but it is it is in the way you are speaking. For example, if I say he is, he is famous because he's well known. He's famous because he's well known. It's secular. Being famous is what we mean when we say well-known. So when you put because there, we are expecting you to give us reasons why he's famous, not to repeat famous in a, another word, okay? Morality is leading a morally upright life. Secular, empty. Development is to develop the nation and embark on developmental projects so that the nation becomes developed by the developed nation. Uncle who? You said nothing. It's empty. You just repeated the definition in the definition. That's thing we don't understand development. Help us understand. You are repeating development in your, your definition. We criticize such a definition as well. Secular. And then the very last one for our topic two. We have even done some topic three inside. Okay. The last one is what? Vague. When do we say a definition is vague? When you use language, 
figuratively, you create a vague meaning and you, you understand that shortly, not today, but in the course, okay? Vague means either you are being symbolic, you are being idiomatic, you see, proverbial, metaphorical, you are not using language literally, it will be vague. If I say Nancy is a flower, me, Nancy is a flower. I'm not saying you can go and pluck me in the garden over there, no. It's a figurative use of language. See, you have shrouded the expression in a way that doesn't expose what you mean literally. So the person must unpack it. If they say, uh, my roommate is a pig, it doesn't mean your roommate has four legs. Maybe you are saying he's snoring, maybe you are saying he's dirty, and so on and so forth. So when you use language in a vague manner, it comes with a lot of problems, okay? Especially when you don't send notice. So I'm saying that where you are defining, you're trying to give a definition, but you are symbolic or you are overly general that we do not see a specificity. You're not specifying what you are referencing. So you have given a definition. There's one in your textbook. Democracy is freedom for all. You are defining democracy. You say democracy is, if you don't know the democracy, look at freedom for all. Freedom for all what? Animals, tables, chairs, human beings of all colors. What, what do you mean by freedom? We already saw how many connotations you can even get for freedom alone. So this is so vague, it's empty. Don't let any politician or lecturer or anybody come and tell you uh, we are going to fight for freedom for all. That thing is not clear. You don't even know what you're going to fight for. How do you get it? What is freedom for all? Freedom means you talk what you want to talk <laughs> on air. It can't mean that. That is chaos, okay? So a vague definition, our problem with it is it doesn't specify to be meaningful at all. So we say it is vague. Secular repeats, narrow excludes, broad includes aliens, you know, as vague does not even specify at all. Very good. The rest are for topic three, we we'll engage them. I think I've even given you more than you should. So this example on your screen now from your textbook, those who have it, you have seen them, okay? Lady, efficiency is being efficient at what you do in this office, please. <laughs> Didn't help the poor national service person. She doesn't understand that. Efficiency is being efficient at what you do. Then I can, nothing. That, this is secular, I, I'm sure you can see. The meaning of evil is murder. You are telling me if I don't know evil, I should look at murder. What's the crime there, all of us? Yeah, I want trouble for myself. You can unmute and answer chorusly and then mute again. We are ending. The meaning of what, what crime is there? How would you diagnose it? Narrow or broad or secular or big? Murder. 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 Madam Murder is broad. No, Please let's if you don't know evil, oh, look at murder. It's narrow. It's narrow. It's narrow. Very, narrow. You understand me now. Narrow. Very good. Very good. Oh. Well done. Those who don't like the chorus answer, sometimes it helps. Eh? So don't worry. Let's add a little bit of that into the, uh, the recording. It will help you for your revision. Then look at the next one. A dinosaur is a prehistorical creature. I'm saying if you don't know a dinosaur, look at yeah, any prehistorical creature. What crime do we have? Broad. 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 Then we can end. Hey, there are still over 300 of you. Well done. Casey, I do have a question. If it's a question, ask. Evelyn, I see it too. The other one is an ID. It's not safe to put your ID out like that. Eh? 1096 81, blah, blah, blah. Don't put your ID like that. Saki Emmanuel, if it's a question, put up. Hey, hey, you, can, you can ask it. Kuma Prince, Veridas, Simon, okay. So if, if there are questions, Hello. yes, Hello. go ahead, sir. Very does go ahead. Quick, 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 quick. Um, please be there. Um, yes, please. Whoever it is, go ahead quickly. Yeah. 
please, with the aspects of um, the uh, definitions, you gave us connotations yes, and denotations. Yes, so I want to ask uh, mm -hmm. the open texture and then the well-defined terms. Please, what do they fall under? They are not definitions. They are telling you how to think of terms. When you see a word, that word can be open texture or it can be what? A closed concept. So justice, the word justice is not a definition. Just the word, the term. It, that, it cannot have a definition that you everybody must agree on by force in that discipline. No, that's the point. Okay, so those ones are addressing concepts. One concept, a word, an idea can be open texture. What's another? Like even number is a concept in mathematics, but it doesn't have different connotations. You can't. If you give it a different connotation, then go and do another discipline. The, the discipline can't inhabit more than one meaning. But in law, there can be different connotations of what the word justice, because it's an open text. So one is dealing with terms, the other is looking at the full definition. Okay. All right. The last two guys are allowed. Okay. Thank you. Let me, thank you. I'll take all the questions. Let me stop the video now. Okay. So that those two that have to attend some other lecture can go. I'm also entering to another lecture. We are supposed to finish at 10 20. So I stop the recording now, and then we can take a few questions. I see. Thank you for your time. Have a wonderful week. Hold on. Yeah.